Hi, my name is Michael and I'm the Shop Geek, and in this project episode, we're going to build a Murphy bed. This Murphy bed is going to have a nice little twist. It'll be inspired by Doctor Who. For the Murphy bed platform, we're going to cut this uh, 4x8 sheet of half inch plywood down to exactly the dimensions of the bed. So I know that my mattress is 38 and a half inches by 75 inches, so I'm going to measure that across. And I'm going to measure my 75 down. And then I'm going to get the circular saw and cut this nice and square. Now this is the, uh, you might want to leave maybe a half inch larger than the mattress so you can fit sheets and, and blankets down the sides. Uh, but you want to be pretty close. You want to be a snug fit because this bed is going to have to hold itself up against the uh, wall. So I've got a few knots in this board that I'd like to fill before we paint because I bought an inexpensive sheet of plywood. There's a few gaps here that I need to fill in. If you're going to stain your wood, you need to use a proper wood filler that's stainable and roughly the color of the wood that you're working with. If you're going to paint it a solid color, you can break out the carpenter's secret weapon, Bondo. Follow the instructions on the can and mix it up. You do have to work fast because this hardens very quickly, but it will sand almost like wood. We can smooth this off and it will give us a great surface for finishing. I purchased four 2x8s 8 feet long for the frame of the bed and some of the pieces on the wall. I'm going to keep the two straightest ones for the long sides. First I'm going to cut the two short sides, however. The short sides are the same width as the platform that we've already cut to the size of the mattress. So I'm going to measure out 38 and a half. I'm going to mark my cut line and then I'm going to cut this piece. For the long sides using the straight boards, you want to add the thickness of two of the boards to the long measurement of the platform. So these boards are an inch and a half thick. I'm going to add three inches to the 75 inches that my platform is, and I'm going to cut these boards at 78 inches. That'll give us a nice overlap in the wood at the ends, and that'll give us some strength for reinforcing the bed. I'm using a simple glue block method for the platform support. I'm using 2x2s to attach the platform to the 2x8s, and when all this goes together it'll make sense for you. Right now I'm going to cut two of the straightest 2x2s I have to 75 inches, which is the length of the bed platform. My two short glue blocks will be the width of the platform minus 3 inches. So my platform is 38 and a half, this will be 35 and a half inches long. Always do a dry fit before final assembly in your projects. You can see from this layout how these pieces will overlap and we'll be able to put a few screws in the ends right between each board in order to keep the glue blocks secure to the frame. We'll attach the glue blocks to the frame using two and a half inch number eight wood screws. Because the glue blocks are so thin I'm going to pre-drill the holes for these and I'm going to put one every six inches along this board. We'll also use wood glue when we finally attach this to the frame. Our mattress is five inches thick, and I'd like to have an inch and a half sticking up above the bed frame. So we're going to put our glue block four inches down from the top, and our platform will give us an extra half inch, which will give us the one and a half inches above the top. So I've created what's called a story stick. I've marked two lines on this four inches apart, and if I place one line at the top of my board, the second line will mark the top of my glue block. I can use this board also to space in the right distance from each end. I've created two of these, which will space out all the way around. Normally, driving screws into the end grain of a board is very weak. To compensate, I'm going to use a lot of glue, and we're using large number 10 by 3 inch screws. We'll secure the ends together and frame up all four corners. Once the frame is assembled, dry fit the support panel in place. I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way around and then tack it in place with a brad nailer. You don't need a lot of these, it's just to keep it in place until the glue sets. Don't forget ear protection and eye protection if you're using a compressor like I am. I'm going to sand this down with an 80 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. 
I find uh, you don't need to go too fine with your sandpaper. Just knock down the edges and any rough spots, make it nice and smooth to the touch, and then we'll be ready for painting. I'm going to use nice long number 10 screws to attach this directly to the studs in my wall. This piece is cut the same width as the bed and it's wide enough to cover three studs. That's where we're going to attach this. I'm going to pre-drill my hinges and attach them to the wall board and to the bed, make sure that works, before I attach anything to the wall. It's a lot easier to drill these holes and attach the screws on the floor than it is on the wall. When you're ready for final assembly, apply the wall plate to the wall, take the hinges and screw those into the bed frame underneath and put in all the screws that you need, and then prop the bed frame up to the same height as the wall board so that the hinges will line up with their pre-drilled holes. Get a helper to stabilize the top of the bed as you put the screws through the hinges, and then the entire thing will be properly attached. We're using a simple gate hitch to keep the bed in the upright position when we raise it. You can see that we're attaching the bar here to this corner of the bed and leaving enough room to extend past the outside rail. The receiver for the hitch has been placed on the wall on a scrap piece of plywood. Make sure you're using strong drywall anchors and at least two of your screws should be in a stud if possible. With the bed attached to the wall, block up an outside corner with stacks of plywood or scraps of other wood until the bed is perfectly level. This will give you a measurement for the height of the feet we'll need to place on the outside corners of the bed. We're into the final stretch and we're just putting the finishing touches on the TARDIS. This will be on the bottom of the bed so you'll see it whenever the bed is up against the wall. I'm using masking tape to determine the final layout and make sure everything looks good. I've purchased 3 quarter inch trim made out of MDF for the framing of the doors and that'll give me a nice shadow line once it's attached. I've also got some leftover 3 quarter inch plywood for the main sign across the top that will say police box. You can see I've also printed the door sign and I've taped it into place temporarily. I've cut two pieces of trim for the center panels and one piece for across the top. Since the dry fit looks good, I'm going to attach these using glue and a brad gun and then I'll measure the other ones to fit around them. I'm going to attach a piece of half round trim that I have left over from another project to the center line of the doors. That'll make it look more like the TARDIS on TV. All that's remaining now is to paint the upper sign, which I'm going to do flat and then attach it, because it's easier to paint the words on it when it's not six feet in the air. Once the paint is dry, you can add as many details as you choose. Since this Murphy bed is modeled on the 11th Doctor's TARDIS, I've added the St. John's Ambulance sticker and also a couple of handles to the front. They don't actually open any doors, but they look good from a distance. This is also missing the keyhole, which I'll have to add later, but everything else is now complete. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.